Incompetence Pod. Welcome to the Perpetual Incompetence Podcast, a journey in competitive self-improvement. Bear witness as the three of us endeavor to improve our lives by competing in a series of low-stakes challenges. In each episode, we will come up with a challenge and then define the rules or metrics for victory. We have two weeks to do our best, and at the end, one of us will be crowned victor. Hi, I'm true believer and poetic soul, Mike Collins. Hello, I'm Master Yogi, Master of Wind, the Songsmith, and the busiest beaver, Dan Collins. And I'm Future Corpse, Travis Scarinicus Brabant. We each have one idea for a challenge for us to attempt in the next two weeks. After we've all presented, we'll decide whose idea is the best. Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go first. Okay, uh, so, um, as we know, uh, sugar makes you chubby. It also <laughs> can cause uh, migraines, inflammation, and all sorts of problems with your body. So sure. my challenge would be to eat the least amount of uh, sugar, basically. So okay. So we'd have to monitor what we eat fairly closely. And if you have like a soda or a candy or sugar in your cereal or something, um, then uh, yeah, that, that would be it. So I don't hate that one. Yeah, there's definitely room for improvement there. Yeah. Would it be like uh, anything with artificial sweeteners or because like it seems like so many things have sugar in them. Things that like like bread has sweetener in it now. Yeah. Well, I would say, I mean, artificial sweeteners, if it's, uh, you know, like no calorie, I, well, I guess I don't know. That's up for debate. Do, do we want to do like no artificial sweeteners as well? Or could we do like diet sodas and that sort of thing? Oh, I I would say it, it kind of just stay away from the regular old sugar, you know, the white stuff. Yeah. Comes in a sack. Yeah. I kind of think that, yeah, I don't know. I, I would be tempted to go with like sweetener free, like get rid of all of it. Just go without having any sweetener. I mean, like um, things that are like sneaky and that you don't know have sweetener in them, that would be fine, I guess. But just uh, nothing sweet, no desserts, no beverages that have sugar in them, that sort of thing. I don't know. I I would say, you know, make the challenge to no sugar, like sugar that has calories and that kind of thing. But if you were to cut out all sweeteners, you know, it might sweeten the deal for you. Mm, Sure. Okay. (laughs) What do you... (laughs) Come on. Uh... (laughs) Uh... This so would is be your... kind of hard because you'd have to read every nutrition label of everything that you eat. Yeah, you'd have to be aware of what you're putting in your it'd body. It would be like who eats the least grams of sugar. Yeah, like milligrams or whatever's on there. Yeah. Yeah. That probably is the metric, right? Yeah, I would say so. It'd be, it'd be was... very similar to the uh, the screen time one. You know, you just got to okay. monitor it. Okay. All right. Well, that's one. Um, sure. Uh I can I can uh, <laughs> tell you mine. Um, so when we were doing the um, poetry episode, um, a uh, Eileen, uh, a friend of mine, pointed out that we didn't really talk about any female poets, um, and sure. that made me realize that you know perhaps we're not very in touch with our femininity. I can't I mean, right? We need sure. to understand we well, okay, we can't understand things from the female perspective, but perhaps we can make an effort. So my challenge would be let's get in touch with our feminine side. Okay. And okay. to be fair, I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, however, femininity is generally traditionally um uh it, it would be considered to be uh, have have like the characteristics of gracefulness, gentleness, empathy, humility, sensitivity, um, 
and generally things that like, uh, you know, female people, um, which is also a loose term. Um, those types of people um, have. Yeah, this this is a dangerous territory. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Say, Jeff, this, definitely. Uh, but I think one... that that's that's the exciting part of it, isn't it? Because <laughs> we're because you guys are two ex-Marines, you know, Travis, you're still in the military. You know, I'm I'm a yeah. I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> uh and you know i think you know maybe it's time that we we try to we try to i mean we could to be fair we could probably only scratch the surface of of what it's like to be a woman <laughs> but you know what i think i think i think it would be a really good challenge for us to try to to take a step at least in that direction. And then I, I don't really, I, I, that's about as far as I've thought on this. I would like to hear you guys' idea for a metric besides, <laughs> unless we just sort of did like a, who's the most feminine or like who, who's, who's, who's become, who's, who's understood the feminine perspective, the, the best or so, something I, like that and this is i'm this i'm is, not i'm not opposed to it like yeah. i uh i have no problem uh getting in touch with my feminine side uh i do worry that this will bring the internet down upon us oh that's 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 100 percent something that i considered and i think that it would be you know and i i think if we approach it from the, the perspective that we we are completely ignorant but you know we're making an attempt I think that perhaps we can be forgiven, but I, I think that I don't think it would be, I don't, I don't think people could maybe get after us for making a, tr for trying, you know what I'm saying? My, I, th I, I think, I, I think, I think you're right. They couldn't get after us for trying, but I, I could see somebody getting angry with us in the, in the manner in which we try. <laughs> that's you know what I mean? absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> I think you guys both underestimate the internet and that they could absolutely get mad at us just for trying. But, but I do know, think that there's I, probably I, value there. It could I mean, be I don't, good. I don't care too much what the but internet I think thinks that's, about me. I think that might be, that might be, that might be the problem. You know what I mean? That we, yeah. the fact that we're so scared to even like the, the possibility that we might offend somebody by attempting to understand things from another perspective. Um, you got me there, Dan. You know what I'm trying uh, to say? Yeah, no, yeah. That, like, uh, like, I think making an attempt that, that's, is yeah. is honorable, and if somebody doesn't like that, I don't know. I mean, we're it. it all we can do they is can, try. They can go. They can go sit in syrup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, so that's. Uh, I want to. I want to defend us just the tiniest bit. Of, you know, you're. Your friend saying that we didn't listen to or mention any female poets. I think we all like probably read some female poets, but I, it I was like did. poetry about manliness. Which, if, yeah, if you could show me <laughs> a woman that's, that's writing a lot of poetry about manliness, then she's uh, ahead of her time. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure there are some out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I I like that. That's an interesting one. Certainly, uh, pretty open ended, but I think that could be really fun. Uh, I'll do mine. Uh, yeah. So. Doing this podcast has led to us uh, listening to ourselves talk a lot, and sometimes we're really bad at it. Uh, I think we need to endeavor to be more articulate. We need to work on expressing our ideas and thoughts more effectively, uh, choosing the correct words uh, for every different situation. So I think, in general, we need to work on becoming more articulate, I guess. But like, just get, uh, get but better at like, saying words. But, uh, but like, so, what? What do you mean? Like, you know? Uh, so <laughs> like, but like, you know, I'm just kidding. That was a joke. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's there's obviously lots of ground to be made up in this area. We can all improve. I think significantly. The the metric that I had in mind would be something to the effect of we would pick a topic at random, and then we'd all have to give an extemporaneous speech on that random topic. And then the other two would, you know, listen, engage, listen for the likes and the ums and the ahs, and then give a final score on their performance. What does extemporaneous mean? It means not <laughs> prepared and off the top of your head. Okay. Um, so 
<laughs> See, now I'm just listening for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the topics that we, we would be giving a, a, a discussion on, would these, would it be something that we chucked at us or could it be something that we, um, is it, is it going to be basically like something off the, off the cuff you said? It, I, I kind of had like, um, interview questions sort of thing or something that is easy to talk about. Something that everybody has an opinion on. Justin B. So, so like, so like, um, we, the other people would have something ready for an idea for a speech for the second half for some, one of the other people. I like the idea of a interview questions. That's, that's kind of good. Um, we could just kind of pick from a list, you yeah. know, okay. I don't have my heart set in either direction. I think that just come up with a question. We could either pick one out of a list on our own or the other ones could pick for us. Something yeah. like that. Okay. I, I like I like this this challenge. Um, should we? Okay, let's make a decision. Which one are we gonna do? I I like this one. I the elocution. I think that's uh, that's something we need to work on. I think it would make me sound less dumb if I could not say like um you know all the time. Yeah. It is probably better to do that one sooner than later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there is there a way to like practice that, like to train that? Or I is think that so? You do it in your everyday conversation, and you probably can practice it. You know. I mean, Dan, you you talk to like patients every day, right? I do. I mean, I when I when I am. At work, I think, especially when I'm talking to patients um, at the clinic, like, uh, I, I think I am like the most, like, uh, I am, I am so good at talking to people. But then, like, that, then, like, you know, when I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I get, when I am not at in a professional setting, it just shuts off, and I, my brain turns to mush and then i talk like a like a lazy stoner you know <laughs> uh, i will say um i haven't finished it but they're dale carnegie how to win friends and influence people uh, i think great book. it is a great book it's unfortunately titled in that it kind of sounds like uh like a i don't know like, kind of a bro like the art, of, art, of the, art of the game yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. If you can get past the title, yeah. though, it's very well worth a read. And he talks I have read sort that of book. Okay, there's a there's a, kind of I think a, a lot in there about um, just the way you are able to present yourself better and word choice and stuff like that. And there's also I think online courses. There's got to be a million YouTube videos about how to speak more intelligently. That's yeah. true. Interesting. Um, I do think that that challenge is. Like not not only very like applicable to what we are doing currently, and I'm also noticing as I'm speaking right now, I'm saying the word like, and now it's really driving me insane. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yes. But uh, dang it. Okay, I want to do that one. I want to do that one. All right. I really want to get in touch my with my femininity too. I'm going to bring this up again later. Hey Dan, but... you could do that at the same time. We can come back around to it. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I, I could do both of them. You can. Might give you yeah. something to talk about with people. That's true. Uh, okay, so I want to okay. do that one. That's let's, it. Let's, I want to do that one. I think we're in agreement. Yeah, let's dive into the metric a little bit. So, uh, basically, we are going to throw a. I'm trying very hard not to say like right now. <laughs> I know. The more you think about it, the more you um, notice it. At least. So. <clears throat> We... So, so something to the effect of uh, <laughs> tell me about a time when you had to overcome a challenge with somebody or um, tell me about the most interesting dining experience you've ever had. I, I think what w what would be the best the best way to do it, because the 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 time that you're when you're speaking just in normal conversation or when we're talking on the podcast or something, it's all just what you're you're just saying it right. So I think the best way to 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 judge this is to give somebody a prompt at the moment. 
So what I think we should do is we should each come up with a prompt for somebody to speak for maybe three minutes, five minutes, something like that. I think that that's pretty long. I would think a minute to two minutes would be yeah. pretty, yeah, pretty sizable. Plenty. I, but I, I, yeah. I, what Go I ahead, was Dan. just gonna say. Oh, oh, okay. Fine. Did you have more? I cut you off. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that, I mean that's it. And then like, so we we give you give the prompt, and then the person has to speak for however long we say, and then we judge them based on how many ums. I mean, is that what is that what it is? Like filler words? There's more to it than that, isn't there? Well, I, I think right. we need it. It needs to be, um, how, it, it, like an overall kind of assessment of how well they do and how, um. Like, I don't know how elegant your your speech is, basically, you know, are, is it smooth? You know, are you not saying, you know, all the time like I do? Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. so, kind of a, a holistic scoring. Yeah, how, I, I think how... I think it. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're good. Well, I was going to say but... I was going to elaborate on how smooth, like you said, how smoothly you're able to talk, how many filler words you use how accurate or how effectively do you express your point that sort of thing okay i i, I agree and i we could do it on a we either a 1 through 100 kind of thing like we just did or we could do a you know vote for somebody other than yourself kind of rules i think that i think that actually works out pretty well sure uh yeah okay that works for me i I also feel like in the in the pro in the as we learn about this and we research it we're going to discover that there's more than more to this than we um than we know right now you know what i mean yeah um yeah sure like uh like right now we're just saying like i don't want to be keep saying like i don't want to keep saying uh i don't want to keep saying you know but there's probably more like how to be engaging. Yeah. Sure. It, it's, it's interesting to say that because we are literally doing a podcast and we're attempting to be engaging. But right. I mean, <laughs> isn't, isn't that isn't that interesting? Right. Like how yeah. how I mean, I mean, we're just sort of saying right now that we want to be better at the thing that we're doing right now. Yeah, that's a fu- that's a cool idea. I like it. Okay. It's kind of exciting, actually. I'm getting more excited I, about this every minute. I kind of like the idea of the prompt being something that we've talked about on the podcast because we all know that we have opinions about it. Yes. Oh, uh, and I, you know what? This this reminds me of like at the end, you know, like if you if you win and you get the honorific, and then you have to just come up with something to say at the end of the episode. It better be good. It, well, yeah, and like. <laughs> it's I just didn't like again. Um but like I I just did it again. Holy cow, that's really hard to not do. But uh, uh I I don't I don't think I like the the prompt being a prior topic because yeah. I we might have phrases and thoughts kind of ingrained. Like we've already talked about it so much relatively recently. It would give us recent stuff to draw from. I think that for the challenge, you know, the the final test, it should be something new, relatively, or something that we haven't thought a lot about recently. Okay. But something that we're familiar with. Yeah. But um, we should okay. come up with something. So we each come up with one prompt for somebody else. Okay. Yeah, that- maybe maybe what we could do is we can each bring prompts for the other people, and then we'll let the the person pick between, you know. Yeah. No, like no, that. no. It's gotta be. It's gotta be immediate. Like, like we, like I have one for Mike. Travis has one for me, and then Mike has one for Travis. So, like, something like that. You know what I mean? Like, we just have to pick, and then like you, you give it to them, and then they, they do it. All right. Okay. Yeah, we could do it that way. Because I All think right. the more you, you have to, it has to be there has to be no preparation because then, then you're working on. Well, the no, 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 no. I, I mean, like. Uh, so like me and Dan would both bring an option for Travis to talk about, and then he can pick between one of those two. That would and then start immediately. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I th- yeah. Okay. I think that's fine then. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's do that. Let's, let's do that. Um. Uh. Okay. Let's talk honorific. I got a pretty good one. How about elegant elocutionist? 
I was going to say smooth talker. <laughs> <laughs> I like smooth talker, actually. <laughs> I feel like that's it. Smooth. It's straight and to the point. Smooth talker. Smooth, uh, what's that one Sade song? Smooth operator. Smooth operator. Smooth that sounds a little bit more like a like a pickup artist. Yeah, that's true. Smooth talker. I like smooth talker. I don't know. I feel like we can do better. Let's play in the space a little bit. All right. Play, play with me a little bit, you guys. All right. Um, Convince me of smooth talker. <laughs> I. It's not. I'll say it's not a clever or whatever. It's just a. It's a common phrase people give out when someone is articulate, elegant, and I don't know. Doesn't stumble over the words. I didn't sell it very well, I guess I'll say. <laughs> yeah, just like, You're not a very yeah. smooth talker, are you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have room for improvement, I'll say that. <laughs> uh, this is also something I feel like we should be working on all the time throughout our life. Yeah. And two weeks probably isn't enough time to really grasp a good control. I feel like it could probably make some improvement in that time. It's kind of like the, you know, the, the screen a kiss one. Like I, uh, after not, you know, becoming more aware of how much you like pop into your screen, you know, it yeah. kind of, it, it, it did become more of a habit to like put a check in my mind, like, Oh, I shouldn't be looking at this. So I, I think it's possible to have some improvement anyway. You can start forming habits. So, all right, we can do smooth talker. I'm, I'm okay well, with it. We we can play around if you want to, you know. Well, you guys, we nobody's get... playing. I, I I put out one. Travis put out one. Dan's just kind of been giggling there. I can't, what do you I got? can't think of one. Uh... We could get silly. We could like the word hammer, or I mean, word, <laughs> we already did song smith, but the word hammer. Like the wordsmith is a thing. We already did song smith, so we don't want to go yeah, too far into that. One. But hold on, uh, give, give, me, give me a minute. Give me a minute. Word. The word. You do the word warrior uh, <laughs> that for some reason makes me think of like uh word munchers or like the old <laughs> computer yeah, game. Munchers, yeah. Yeah. Um, how about the articulate is a good adjective. The awesome articulator. <laughs> Arta- how about just the articulator? <laughs> the articulator. That's uh, I do like that. That sounds, that's I mean, It's pretty good. I think that some people who don't know that word would be like the articulator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's ex- that's kind of fun. <laughs> that's a different kind of challenge, but silver tongue, <laughs> silver tongued uh, uh, snake. No, that doesn't. That's not. Well, good. silver tongued devil is a thing people say sometimes. But yeah, silver tongue. I like silver. You just be the, the sil- silver. You tongue. can just be yeah, silver tongued. The silver tongue. So, uh, I'm okay with it. That's not really an, art, an honorific. Oh yeah, it is the silver tongued. Yeah, yeah that's or just good. I mean, yeah. We could start. Uh, this, this is a side note. We could start putting the honorifics after name after the name, so it could be like Travis Future Court or the Future Corpse Travis Screenicus Brabin the the silver tongued. Ooh, yeah. okay. I do like that a lot, actually. I like, actually, I like the silver tongued. Then, if we're doing that, silver tongued, yeah, I kind of like it. that. It's got sort of like a, a medieval kind of vibe yeah. going on. All right, okay, so we have our challenge, we have our metric, we have our honorific. Let's do this. <laughs> uh... Hi, folks. Uh, while we're taking this break here, just wanted to stop and say thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Um, if, if you guys are enjoying the show, um, uh, it's helpful if you leave a review or you comment um, or just tell your friends about the show. Um, you can do that in a lot of ways, whatever is convenient for you. We're on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Um, you can shoot us an email. That works great, too. You can uh, tell us what you're thinking about the show um, or if you have any good ideas for challenges we'd like to hear that as well yeah so if you if you want to send an email we're at perpetual incompetence at gmail.com all one word no spaces or hyphens or anything um and then on twitter we are at incompetent pod and instagram we're perpetual underscore incompetence 
All these links will be in the show notes for the podcast, so that's probably the easiest way for you to find them and to reach out to us. If you'd like to join us in the challenges, we'll be posting them to Twitter as soon as we start them. Uh, We try not to discuss the challenges with each other uh, during the two weeks while we are actually doing them uh, so that we can save those juicy morsels for when we come back to discuss them on the show. So we would love nothing more than to hear about your guys' experiences, thoughts about the show, or just pop in to say hello. So uh, if the spirit moves you, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Anyway, back to the show. Welcome back to the Perpetual Competence Podcast. As a reminder, we recorded the first part of the podcast two weeks ago, and since then, we've worked on improving how well we're able to speak and convey our thoughts. Let's discuss our initial thoughts and lessons learned, and then we'll give our impromptu speeches. Uh, Who wants to go first? I'll I'll, I'll take it this time. So, uh, this has been... I feel immensely unprepared for this one uh, for a couple reasons, Uh, but I am not going to call it an excuse. I will just say, uh, mainly, in my everyday life, I don't talk to a lot of humans, is what I'm finding. (laughs) Because, so, uh, what's what's been happening is I've, I've watched like a bunch of videos and stuff about how to, how to talk good, be a good talker. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. and then I just kind of sit and imagine what it would be like to talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I've been that, so that's been interesting. Uh, it's been a little depressing because it, it's made me, uh, quite aware of how, how little interaction I have as a professional software developer <laughs> <laughs> where I sit and stare at my computer and we were we were talking about this uh, kind of in between the podcasts, which we try not to do. But I, uh, <laughs> in my it, at work, you know, when when most people be talking to people, I <laughs> like if if there's a reason that I need to go talk to somebody, I like need to like sit and prepare myself just for the fact that I need to go deal with another human. <laughs> <laughs> like, Mentally uh, prepare. Get psyched up. I'm like, all right, need to like you know un unslouch my throat or something so that it'll work again. Drink some drink some more coffee so I can appear peppy. I don't know. So anyway, that's uh so that's been something that's been going on. And then um on top of that, uh, I've noticed. So I've been trying not to use filler words. I'm probably have been awful already. Uh, yeah, but... you have. I've, I've been paying attention to okay, it. Well, You've been that. saying um a lot. <laughs> I think you're doing great, Mike. <laughs> Thanks. <Travis. laughs> but uh, be, because of this, in my everyday conversation, I, I feel like people might be thinking I'm I'm stupider because like I I stop and like try and find a word, and sometimes sometimes it takes quite a long time for that word to come to me. So we just kind of sit in silence while I, <laughs> I stare off into the distance and just kind of glaze over. I search my mind palace for that that missing phrase, and then uh, and then sometimes it just never happens. Some you know some people are are very uh, friendly and they'll try and help you, uh, but it often just kind of spirals into you don't know how words work, Mike. <laughs> so. See, I have this problem where like. When people are searching for the word or they have a break where they're trying to think about what to say, I I think this is a bad habit of mine where I try to like volunteer what word they might be searching for. Like we've entered into a game of involuntary charades and I'm like, (laughs) I'm trying to anticipate what they were going to say. Um, Sometimes I get it right, but I think that, you know, I should probably do that less. Um, So if I do that to you, Mike or Dan, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. I should probably work on that. Well, like I was just talking about, I mean, it actually kind of works out for me, you know, if I uh, pause sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, I definitely notice when you're not saying uh, the, the, or like, you know, those, mm-hmm. those are still pauses in your brain. You're still trying to think of what to say, but if you're not saying any, if, if you're not filling in the little space with uh you know then <laughs> it's just silence which is weird <laughs> yeah it, it's it's more jarring to your brain 
Yeah. Like, the filler it, word it you don't notice, and it's like a, a nice little band aid, but to have the silence, like a moment of silence while you're thinking, and then you start thinking about the silence, and like, yeah. rather than focusing on thinking of the word or what your next thought should be, you will become like consumed with like, oh, I, this silence has gone on too long. I need to stop this. Why haven't I stopped this yet? <laughs> well, nature abhors a vacuum. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think that the some of the filler words are kind of, they become like this, it's sort of a Zen thing. So like, as you're waiting, waiting to, or you're trying to figure out a, a phrase in a, and then you just kind of sit there and go, hmm, you know, that's kind of what is oh, happening. Like a meditation kind of yeah. thing. It kind of helps uh... me find, find that word sometimes. Yeah. I, I don't know. So that's that's where we're sitting, boys. That's, uh, <laughs> that's been my experience. I don't have high hopes for myself. I will say um, my experience was sort of close to yours in that I, I watched, you know, videos and I read some stuff uh, detailing ways to improve your your manner of speech and things like that. I found that mm -hmm. predominantly most of the videos and articles on this topic are from like a business perspective. And like, here's how you should give speeches better. And like that, I mean, that's great, but that doesn't really address how to speak off the cuff in everyday life, which is kind of what we're going for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not so much like planned speech with bullet points and stuff like that, more just impromptu or ad hoc um, methods of communication. There are some things out there. I did find some of them, but um, overall, all of the advice, I've got a, a couple notes if we want to go through them, but it all boils down to essentially, if you want to get better at speaking, you need to speak. <laughs> you have yeah. to talk <laughs> to other people and you have to like, um, oh, no. like the, the tips are like just generally just practice improvising speech. It's like playing guitar in a way in that, or any instrument, I guess. If you want to get better at playing it, you have to practice it and try to practice it in ways that reflect how you want to eventually play. So like if you want to do a shredding guitar solo, you need to practice solos and scales and stuff like that. Yeah. It's 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 a habit to break is what right. it is. You know, you know it's kind of funny. Form, I guess. Let, let me spin you a yarn here quick. So when I was in uh, starting college after the Marine Corps, I, I took this uh, public speaking class. And uh, it was kind of a funny experience because I, I you know, I have some public speaking experience not a lot but you know I don't, I don't mind being in front of people and so for that entire class i never prepared a single speech i just winged it every single time and i just i, I murdered that class i killed it i got an <laughs> a plus and it was hilarious because every you know uh my wife is quite studious and it just drove her absolutely bonkers <laughs> because because i she was like why don't you you know practice your speech and it was you know my answer was generally well because i don't have it yet i figure i'll get it kind of knocked up in the morning before we go to class <laughs> and then <laughs> she was so angry with me and then i just i did quite well so i've always thought of myself as a good speaker but in doing this podcast and listening to myself speak i think i'm just good at faking it really well <laughs> you've, you've got the confidence part of it yeah, and that's half the battle. <laughs> and so, so I'm not, you know, and there you go. My, my biggest go to I found is the, you know, be, that's what I say. Yeah, that's my problem. Sure. I think there's a, there's like a, in my head, I think it's kind of, it's smarter sounding than um, you know, or like, but it serves the exact same purpose. So, <laughs> sure. That's, that's been the bane of my existence. For this challenge so sorry i i yeah. i hijacked your your thing there travis no you're good um i was basically just saying that you need to practice in order to get better uh there are some tips that so uh, dr grace lee on youtube has for improving your impromptu communication uh expand your vocabulary uh which i actually think that I, I'm an okay communicator. Mike, you mentioned that at work, you don't talk to anybody. I am an analyst and project manager. So I almost exclusively talk to people and email people. So I do it all the time. But I think that what set me off on the right foot as far as developing a, a decent communication approach 
uh, was I read a lot of books growing up and I still read a lot. And I truly think that um, if nothing else, books kind of implant in you like how sentences are supposed to sound. And you, I mean, you pick up random words here in terms of phrase that can make you sound more, I don't know, articulate, I guess. We'll, we'll say articulate a lot in this episode, but um, <laughs> so I, I think books help out a lot for that. So I, I had kind of a leg up in that regard. Um, and then the, the point number two from Dr. Grace Lee was practice improvising, which we just talked about. Uh, if you want to get better at it, you have to do it, but you also should practice like, see, I said like, you hear that? <laughs> I heard it. It's like every every time I do something like that, this episode is it's very it's quite painful for me. Yeah. For you guys. As I said, we should practice sort of what we're doing in this episode. Practice talking about things at some length that you don't often talk about. Things that you don't have kind of rote responses to. Uh, like when you talk about the weather, you kind of know what you're gonna say. Or like there's yeah. kind of preformed senses in your brain. The way to get better at more, or, you know, better at communicating would be to break outside the bubble of like convenient speech patterns and talk about um, first contact or you know weird things that don't come up in everyday conversation. Uh, the next thing was uh, use pauses to emphasize your main points. So you, they say to pause before and after your main points. I kind of feel that pausing before a main point would be strange, but. She's a doctor. She probably knows better than I do. <laughs> uh, and then tone and accentuation. Uh, basically, just don't be boring to listen to, which I think I'm pretty bad at. I have, I think, a monotone voice, so um, I should work on altering my tone more to be more interesting to listen to. Uh, and then variation. Variation of your length of sentences. Basically, mix up your... If you have a long sentence, you should followed up with a shorter one basically don't make all your senses long or all your senses short just because it can basically turn off the audience that's a, Same that's thing a with, weird one that's a weird yeah, one to yeah, pay attention to before yeah that one's hard to do if you don't have like a written copy of what you're gonna say i suppose hmm. so and then there's a uh, vary the speed of your words um Interesting. If you're if you're getting to an exciting point, or if you're speaking about something that excites you, you should speak faster in order to kind of, I guess, add a little flavor to it. And then vice versa, if you're speaking about something sad or powerful uh, or important, then you should slow down and you know add emphasis that way. And then you should also vary the volume. So, like I said, huh. I should not be monotonous or monotone. I should mix up my volume for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mix up my volume and speak different. Mix up my volume and change my speech patterns. Yeah. Just yeah. be absolutely jarring to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> and then just pause all the time. Yeah. But, I mean, hey, uh, oh, I can't think of his name. Who played Captain Kirk? William uh, Shatner. Yeah, William Shatner. That's basically what he does. Like <laughs> accentuated pauses and like you know accentuate weird things so he's very maybe he's a interesting to listen to that's true he does hold your attention he does he does yeah yeah so yeah those are the things those are the tips from the internet youtube video that i watched um but yeah overall my experience was similar to yours mike i i did some research watched some things i thought about it and tried to monitor some of the ticks that i have but i think in reality the only way you get better at it is by doing it that's true what do you think, Dan? Well, yeah. So, I mean, I I watched a bunch of YouTube videos as well when I first started. A lot of them, I watched a bunch of them that were just about how to get, how to stop saying all the filler words and stuff. I watched this one long talk about how to, I think it was a, a guy was talking about how to have impromptu conversations, kind of like what you were talking about. Sure. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I just did a lot of practice kind of, uh, I, at, at my job, I'm, my whole job is talking to people. I'm talking constantly at work. Uh, I talk to patients that come in. I do, I do blood draws. I'm a phlebotomist. And when you're doing that, you kind of have to talk to the person constantly through the whole thing. And, 
uh, I do, you know, all of my coworkers are, I'm, I'm talking basically straight for eight hours every day at work. So I get, I, but I also, uh, (laughs) yeah, I mean, I don't know. You're a gregarious guy. It's, it's fine. I don't know. Like the thing is I, I discovered kind of what you were saying before is that a lot of it's kind of scripted. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's all kind of scripted because a lot of it is all the same conversation that I have. Um, I just, and I know exactly what I'm going to say and I know how it's going to start and how it's going to end. So it, I would say that that wasn't that good of practice. But what I did, because I live alone, was I talked to myself a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I every every day when I took a shower, I would pick a topic and then just talk about the topic and try not to say um and like and basically and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I, I described how Magic the Gathering works. I Today, when I took a, a shower, I was describing chess and how chess works and my opinions about it. And that's, that that's probably thing. great practice. Yeah, I mean, that that's ba- basically what we're doing here is what yeah. I was practicing. I, and I would just talk to myself and I would I'd walk myself through my day and how it went. And <laughs> so <laughs> that, that was that was really good practice. I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever just talked to yourself and described something to yourself, but it's interesting it's an interesting experience (laughs) (laughs) yeah that feels like the sort of thing that could get you committed to an institution (laughs) if you do it enough but yeah i mean that probably is the best way if you truly want to improve on something i mean you could have conversations with random people if you wanted to but that like without altering anything in your lifestyle that's probably the easiest way to get a lot of practice at uh being more articulate i I didn't think about doing that at all. And it's not like, I don't know. Good idea, Dan. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I, I agree <laughs> that uh, I'm kind of kicking myself because that's a good idea. I mean, that's why people practice speeches and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah speaking in front of a mirror or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't do that. I think I did do that a little bit. <laughs> I have a lot of mirrors around my house. So I, I probably looked at myself in a mirror and talked to myself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's a little weird isn't it a little bit <laughs> that's fine it's all in pursuit of improving yourself so it's a lot that's right should we get into the get into the meat here yeah, yeah let's, let's go over it. let's go over the metric again just a refresh for ourselves here so basically everybody has brought two prompts for um, one for each person, uh, each other person. And we are going to present those prompts. So basically, everybody is going to get two prompts. They get to pick one of them, and then they will just talk at length, but not ad nauseum uh, about that topic. And then uh, we are going to judge each other uh, who did the best. (laughs) So (laughs) that's that's what's going to happen. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'll go uh, first. Okay. I kind of want to get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I jumped too. on it pretty quick, but I was about to say, "I'll do it." Yeah, <laughs> I want. I want to get it over with. <laughs> All right, Dan. And, and you guys say... are. You guys are gonna like keep track of some of like how many ums I put in there. Well, I, I I'll tell you how I'm going to judge you guys. I'm. Literally just going to listen to you two and kind of just vibe out who I think is doing a better job. I'm gonna I think even, to... if, even if you do use filler words, I'm not like going to count your filler words because there's a lot more to talking good than just <laughs> not saying words that are pointless. So That's true. Is grammatically correct sentences uh, an important part? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Grammar has nothing to do with speech. That's, that's, uh, that's mean, not true at all. I think, it has, <laughs> I think it has quite a lot to do with speech. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I will say I have I have 
two prompts, but I have backups too. I wasn't, I honestly wasn't sure. I, I don't want anybody to get kind of hosed because they, they can't think of a good response to one of these questions. So I have backups if, if you feel neither of these are answerable. So I, yeah. I tried to cater mine to you guys because uh, I want you guys to have something to talk about. So, sure. Okay. Lay them on me. Uh, okay. So, Dan, for you, uh, at first I was trying to think of maybe some musical question or some philosophical question. Uh, but instead, I'm going to go with which is better, original Star Trek or Next Generation and why? Because okay. I, know, I know you have opinions about it. I do. So Okay. And then mine is, in what ways do you hope your life will be different in 10 years? In what ways do you hope it'll be the same? Okay. I think I'll go with the Star Trek one. <laughs> okay. You can think about it for a second. Not that, you know, 10 minutes, <laughs> but... You have exactly 10 seconds. <laughs> okay. And then you must begin. Say when you're ready. Just kidding. Okay. <clears throat> this is actually very funny. Well, I'll, I'll are you, tell you about are you started? it. Are started? No. Okay. <laughs> um, just thinking. Okay. The anticipation is killing me. So which which is better, original or next generation? That's the question. Yep. Yep. And why? I am going to say that next generation is the the better one. Not I I think that I enjoy the original better, but I think the that next generation is better at world building. I mean, the original created the world, the whole Star Trek universe, but I think Next Generation is the one that really expanded it and made it into this the sci-fi show that we know and love. The original is really campy. Uh Kirk is is the is the best captain. I'm going to say that. But John Luke Picard is more of a real realistic um, interpretation of what a starship captain would be, I think, and I think that the that <laughs> that the boy, I'm having trouble explaining this here. I think that the the next generation, it really just it. Oh God, this is hard. I'm nervous, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. Um, Next generation really, it just brought it. It made it real to me, I would say. And a, the original is a TV show. It's like a cowboy TV show, which is awesome, and I love it. But Next Generation felt like real life and that's my answer thank you for coming to my talk all right that was bad Good job. i <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you got derailed once so that, yeah. that's understandable that, was, I'm, that made me a little nervous that was <laughs> what, what was hard for me was like it's weird uh this is what we're doing is weird because it, it like it takes a conversational subject and divorces it from like feedback because when you like paused or whatever i wanted to like I had the thing where I wanted to jump in or at least encourage you or like do something, but it's weird to like not, not respond. All right. So before we get to one of you guys, I lit this is why it was funny because one of my prompts was Kirk or Picard. So I'm gonna change that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to think of a new one really quick here. Yeah. That would have uh, been good for me. Cause I actually haven't, haven't seen the original. So. Oh really? So Picard would win pretty easily in that, in that way. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I was, as you were talking, I kind of wanted to weigh in some things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hold on, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love them both very much. Uh, uh, so we need to wait for Dan to come up with a prompt before. Yeah. 
because that was going to be for one of us. Yeah. Well, it was that one for me because then we could we could ask Travis or we could. That was uh, that was going to be for you, Mike. So we could do Travis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, You ready, Travis? I'm getting nervous. I'm as ready (laughs) as I'm going to be. All right. Uh, Uh, I'll ask you here. Um, So, (laughs) who would win in a fight? A wolf sized Canadian goose or 10 Canadian geese sized wolves? (laughs) Okay, hold on. I got to write that down so I can (laughs) think about it. A wolf sized Canadian goose. Against ten Canadian geese-sized wolves. Against ten Canadian geese-sized wolves. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. I know that you asked me this because of my encyclopedic knowledge about Canadian geese and wolves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that one's. See, like I could I could riff on that one. I feel like pretty good. <laughs> All right, Mike. What do you got? All right, uh, so my question is, what keeps people from exploring, in your opinion, what keeps people from exploring new and different genres of music, and what could they gain by diversifying their musical tastes? All right, so what keeps people from exploring new and whatever, or what'd you say? New and different genres of music. And what could they gain by diversifying their musical tastes? We know a lot about that. Yeah, we're a weird group. Well, I mean, right. we'd spent, we spent two weeks diving into a genre of music that none of us are particularly fond of. That's true. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think I'm going to go with Mike's. Because I, I, as much as I would like to hash out the Canadian geese wolves conundrum, <laughs> that that feels like a more interactive conversation. Okay, <laughs> you could say that you could pose that one to me. I guess <laughs> we'll need to find, figure one out. Uh, we'll see. Okay, I need to think for a second. Yeah. Okay. Lay it on us. All right. So this question has two dimensions. I think the first part is the simpler to answer, so we'll start there. What keeps people from exploring new and different genres of music? I think, quite simply, it's the radio, or it's just the the common music that people hear all the time. I think that they they only hear what they see as normal music because that's the most mainstream, most um, not acceptable, but... Um, accessible music um so i think that that's i think many people don't know that there is this wildly different music out there so they don't pursue it they think that the best music is put on the radio because it's the radio why wouldn't the radio put the best music on it It, so i think that it's it's kind of a simplistic response in that regard and that's why they don't explore new stuff because maybe they don't know maybe people just aren't that passionate about music so they don't make the effort to explore or search different things. And I, we should probably consider that most people maybe don't care about music as much as we and many other people who try to make music do. So I think that's why they don't explore it. Uh, maybe they're not overly passionate about music. Maybe they think that the best music is already on the radio, so why would they search deeper? That sort of thing. So the second part is what could they gain by diversifying their musical tastes? I think they could gain quite a lot. I, in the past, I've said, I think that music is essentially the auditory expression of emotion in the best ways. And I think that by listening to only pop music or music of a, you know, that, that same type or at least one dimensional music only gives people access or the experience of one particular emotion. There's a couple in there, but uh, a narrowed range of emotions. And if they were to branch out and try out different musical genres or musical experiences, they could gain access to different types of motion. Um, metal music, which um, Mike, I know you and I listen to a bit, while having an intimidating feel to it, can give you access to kind of primal emotion or powerful or um, um, 
more aggressive emotions, which can be off-putting to some people, but it also, it's, it's a valid emotion. It's a part of you. Um, and there are times when you want to indulge that in the same way that, uh, classical music or, um, you know, some techno, some house, they can give you access to melancholy or these different emotions that aren't often broadcast on the radio. So by branching out and trying different things, they could gain access to those different emotional experiences musically. And I think that that's the biggest thing that they could gain from diversifying their tastes and, and talk. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. You're good, good at Travis. this. I said, um, a couple times. I know that I counted them. I didn't count uh, yours, man. I, <laughs> that's all I, I figured that's I might all as well I count got, them. man. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was good, man. There's eight, well, there's well eight thumbs, I think. Eight? Oh, Hold that's on, terrible. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten of them. Oof. <clears throat> but, good. but I also think that was very, very well done, very clear. You even had an outline ready. <laughs> pretty impressive. I, th I think that's an that's an interviewing technique, yeah. where you like you kind of rephrase the question, and while you're doing, it, you kind of outline it in your head or pick it apart, kind of thing. Yeah. So, thanks. Yeah. Glad to hear it. That's up to you, Mike. All right. I am also feeling nervous about this. Okay. All right, guys. Lay them on me. Okay. Go ahead, Dan. Um. What is what do you consider to be the best board game and why okay okay mine is what's a weird thing that you think is real or are at least unsure about and why could be conspiracies ghosts aliens bigfoot anything or just anything weird something that's generally accepted as not real you know what i mean yeah, something yeah. fringe <laughs> Um, okay. Oh, man. Uh, if that doesn't spark anything, I, we can well, throw all my backups, too. Well, it sparked something, so I, uh, but I, I might kind of flip the script on it. Okay. Yeah, feel free. But I think I'm going to go with Dan's just because something comes to mind very quickly. <laughs> and then we, okay. we can talk we can talk to we can talk about more about it uh the other one afterwards well so basically i uh, i uh, i am very skeptical of just about everything so it would be a rant on on why people believe those things <laughs> so if but, that's what I you want to do be, if you want to do the board which would be good i would, I would also be very alienating and i don't want to go down that road so <laughs> <laughs> unintended Nice. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Let me think for a second here. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Whenever you're ready, let her go. Okay. So the best board game is kind of a... I mean, it's, it's a hard question because... There's a lot of different experiences to be had in the board game realm. Um, but my favorite board game that I've been playing for a long time since I was a kid is Monopoly. And I think the, the thing about it that I like the most is the parts of the game that are not in the rule book. Because there's the game itself is is fairly simple. There's a and most people consider it to be pretty boring, or a lot of people do. I'm not gonna say most people, because it's you go around in a circle, you get your properties, and if you get the most money, then you win, which is kind of boring. And the game can take like four to five hours depending on who you're playing with. But if you're playing with the the right people. That is to say, competitive people who also like to wheel and deal. I think it adds a whole nother layer to the game 
that I think most people are missing if they think the game is boring. Because my favorite part of it is when you have all these properties and different amounts of money and different hotels or whatever, and you're positioned on the board, you know, partially by luck, but also in a big way, since you can change who owns everything, it adds, it, it gives you the ability to be playing the game the whole time, even when it's not your turn. And I think that's that's the funnest part about it. Um, and I've played with uh, a lot of people, some family members, uh, one in particular who was a real estate lawyer, and they definitely like to argue and wheel and deal the whole time. And <laughs> I very much so enjoyed that. And and uh, there's something very satisfying about uh, pulling the perfect deal on somebody that you know is going to leave them in ruin in about five turns. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's uh, that's why I like Monopoly the best. The end, end scene. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. That was good. That was real good. That's a uh, an interesting point that I haven't thought. I haven't played Monopoly in like I don't know more than a decade. Yeah, well, I'm, I, I so many people. There's like that the whole Dane Cook. He's got a whole bit about it. Where it's like, you know, four hours in the game. Psh, screw you, grandma. I'm going to <laughs> Whatever, you know, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, that's, that's what I like about it. But I think the, the, the fact that I like it because of that reason is why a lot of people don't like to play it with me. <laughs> yeah. You have to play with, like you were saying, competitive people. Competitive people who are in the, it for the long haul. Yeah, who, yeah. Who, who, who like, who don't. Don't mind being mean to win. Yeah. Yeah. Who are willing to sacrifice relationships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You ever played Settlers of Catan, Mike? Yeah, I hate that game. Really? I, I was gonna it. say it because can't say it. You're you're saying like you can you're kind of constantly playing, and that's that's how that game I don't know. I know it's it's I get it. I've played it a lot. I've I actually can say I have never lost Settlers of Catan and I played it like ten times. I really? do not like that game. Yeah. Weird. Do not enjoy it. You need to find out if it's like a competitive league. You can you can play <laughs> Settlers of Catan competitively. I think you might you gotta be careful what you say because that's a that's a beloved game. There might be some people that are not gonna listen to this podcast anymore. Well, they don't have to play I don't have to play well, with them. Most <laughs> people can respect that people have opinions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so <laughs> we've all done our little speeches. Um, now the hard part. I think I definitely lost. I'm just gonna take my hat out of the ring because I, I feel like I froze up. I screwed up, guys. I think you had a hard, a hard prompt, or maybe not a hard prompt, but that's a that's a hard thing to do to compare and contrast. Off that's the top true. of your head, it's a hard thing. It's nice if but, you have bullet points laid out already. Yeah, if you yeah. gave me like a day with that, I I could give you a, a whole big thing. Doctoral thesis. More than you'd ever want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. Um well uh well let's let's keep it you're still in there, Dan. Let's right. let's do our now Travis had proposed a new way of judging. We had gone by Eurovision rules where you can vote for other people. Actually, uh, okay, uh, I just had a thought. Speaking of Eurovision rules, <laughs> if if I think the way that they do it, I, I, I keep on saying that. I've only, I've only like, I saw the movie. <laughs> the movie Will with the Will Ferrell. Yeah. We're, we're in America, <laughs> like, so we've never seen Eurovision, but we're going we're gonna to well, keep I, using I've it right. It. I've watched it like on YouTube, but like I haven't had the full like real experience because it goes on for like several days. Yeah, it's, and that's a great thing. movie too. It is. Uh, but... Um, I, I think like they give like, if you're in first place, they give you like five points and then second place get like, you know, so we could give like, like, I think you deserve two, I deserve one and you deserve three or something like that. And then we could see who wins that way. But Travis, you had proposed something as well. I don't know uh, if that works as well for this, because it, it would be pretty weird to vote against somebody in this, in this capacity. Yeah. Okay. We could though. Uh, we can do whatever. Okay. 
Well, well, I if if we're going with our standard, I I am gonna vote for Travis over Dan. Sorry, Dan. Travis okay. just he sounded like he had planned that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also sorry, Dan. I, if we're doing the somebody else and not yourself, I would vote for Mike uh, for the the compellingness of his rules argument. I enjoyed that. Yeah. I so I'm the I'm the tiebreaker. You get to yeah. choose. I will I choose Travis because I feel like Very his well. his was pretty succinct. He did say Mike, you said um only four times. You did say you know twice though. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even I didn't yeah. catch it. But But you did great. So yeah, Travis said more filler words, but I feel like his like he said he said more with them. Yeah, <laughs> I think he also spoke a little bit longer too, um, which it which shouldn't necessarily um, count for who did better. But I feel like you had you you broke the question down into two parts and you you addressed each of them well. So I think Travis Travis takes it. Awesome. I'd like to put it out there yeah, that yeah, I yeah. feel like I might have been able to take this one if Dan had given me the goose wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> I think the danger with that one would be saying goose and wolf and geese so many times you'd get mixed up and you'd like there's a thing where you say a word so many times it loses all meaning to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and goose is a funny right. word too. <laughs> it is funny. All right, cool. Oh, thanks, guys. That's very validating. Way to go, Travis. Yeah, I, this was definitely a challenge that um, is worth doing. <laughs> very much so. Cause, because it, you, it, you really... It's, it's very easy to sound stupid when you talk, and yeah. nobody wants that. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, this, is, this is one that I probably will continue doing. Like I, I, I kind so, of yeah. like having shower conversations with myself. <laughs> as long as you don't start yeah. liking it too much. <laughs> so as soon as you pop on the shower, hi Dan. Hi Dan, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I got a good one for you today, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe what happened today. Let's, let's pick up where we left off yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at your notes from yesterday. <laughs> I think I think this challenge or this this um, topic is one that is very. It's one of those that like if you're listening to this podcast, it's easy to be judge or if you know we listen to podcasts too, it's easy to be judgmental of people who are having to talk off the cuff, um, like news anchors, podcasters, stuff like that. It's easy to listen and be like, oh, this guy isn't doing a very good job of communicating, and it it's hard. It's kind of like the Bieber thing where like when you try to do a thing yourself or once you really try to understand something, you realize how much of a challenge it actually is. Yeah. yeah. So bear that in mind, listeners. Yeah. I'm looking at you. <laughs> uh, now presenting Travis Brabin, the silver tongue. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you for this wonderful challenge and these interesting impromptu lectures. Uh, thank you to the audience for listening to this, obviously. Uh, I would say spend some time when you talk to your friends, family, coworkers, and try to monitor yourself for those uh, kind of the crutches that you use when speaking to people. And I would um, recommend that you try to improve your, you know, your vocabulary, your manner of speech, because it can make you sound more interesting, more articulate, more intelligent. Um, but other than that, thanks again for listening and uh, see you guys next time. next time on perpetual incompetence and what the the thought i had for a metric for this was how many smiles can we collect oh <laughs> <laughs> what that sounds like the most like serial killer thing ever like, collecting <laughs> smiles smile collector <laughs> yes <laughs>